Welcome back to the poker vlog. This is episode number 93, and for this one, we play one of the wildest sessions of poker that I've ever played. It's a 5-5 uncapped game at the Texas Card House in Austin. It's a meetup game session, and it comes at the tail end of a 7K downswing for me, so it's one of the biggest downswings that I've ever had. Uh, I just do some, some crazy things, and I think the perception of how I play poker is probably gonna change after this, so I'm excited to share it with you. But before we get started, I've got a huge announcement to make. I'm gonna be partnering up with PKC for the World Series of Poker this year. I'm super excited about that. We're gonna be giving away three seats to the $1,500 uh, World Series of Poker Monster Sack event. We're gonna be doing that in a few weeks and I'll have more details uh, in the future um, regarding how to enter and become eligible uh, for that contest. Uh, if you haven't heard of PKC before, it's a mobile poker app. You can play for real money. It's available to U.S. players. And if you live in the U.S., it's by far the best option to play online. They just really care about game integrity, uh, protecting their players, and the player pool is massive, and it's about as soft as it gets online. So uh, if you're interested, I have a link down below in the description box. You can find me on there. My name's Cosmonaut. We can play in some low and mid-stakes cash games. It's pretty cool. But uh, I'm gonna talk a lot more about this at the end of the video for a couple minutes. I'm gonna talk about just the online poker landscape in general and some of the advantages and disadvantages of this app over um, some other uh, poker sites. So I would, I would highly suggest um, sticking around for that and uh, checking that out if you are considering signing up for PKC. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the episode. It's time to go to Texas again. We're going to one of my absolute favorite cities. I get a little vlog work done, then I go straight to the heart of Austin, which it turns out is an empty restaurant in the middle of the airport. We check in at the hotel. It's super nice. Just look how comfortable this bed is. Must be great for Andrew. This is actually where I'll be spending my night on a pull-out mattress. It's about three inches thick. The next day is our first full one in the city. We head to Texas Card House, which has become our home base in the area. Hello from Texas Card House. Did you get that? Yeah. There's always tons of action here. We have a bounty tournament the first night. This doesn't go too well for me. I get it in with top set on an eight, seven deuce, two spade board against ace five of spades and king queen of spades. I'm in phenomenal shape. Oh, I'm going, I'm going dead very much. The turn is an offsuit three. The river is the four diamond, so we fade all the spades and nearly get a triple up. Except, actually, one player made a backdoor straight. Hey. I'm out. <laughs> Lost to ace five. Good way to suck out on Brad. Yep. Sorry, Brad. Unfortunately, cash games didn't go any better for me, and I end up losing around 2,000 total that night. The next day, it's meetup game day, and I'm in desperate need of a win. I'm in the midst of a 7K downswing which is rough for me. It's probably like one of my, one of the top five, like biggest downswings that I've been on. 4K of that is from cash and then 3K is from tournaments. So I kind of expect to, to light tournament money on fire a little bit, but this is more than I'd like to be handling. Um, so I need to turn things around tonight. I realized that the problem is that I haven't been eating enough before playing. So Andrew and I get all the food at Op Restaurant, located inside the JW Marriott. It's amazing food that you gotta try if you're in town. With my belly full, it's time to go back to Texas Card House for some 5-5, no limit. There's several tables going, and we're not leaving till we get a victory. It's an uncapped game. We buy in for a thousand before taking our seat. Early on, we get dealt pocket kings in middle position. It's a perfect hand to disdominate an opponent with. Under the gun plus two opens to 20. That's not gonna be the price for too long. I three bet to 75. Player on my left cold calls. Under the gun plus two ends up folding. We're heads up and the flop is jack four three. I bet 85, my opponent calls. The turn is a 10. This isn't a great card because my opponent most likely has a hand like ace king, queens, jacks, or tens. Some of those hands I'm beating, some of those I'm not. My plan is to bet until I get raised. I make it 175. I get called again. I figure I'd have probably gotten raised at this point if I were up against a set, so. I mostly put my opponent on pocket queens or still potentially ace king. The river is another 10. There's only one possible combination of that, three possible combinations of pocket jacks, and six possible combinations of pocket queens. So that's still the hand that I think that we're most likely up against. I fire for 300. We get some bad news. The opponent wants to play 
for all of it. Raise all in. You're jacked, huh? There's nothing else you could have. I pulled, I pulled. Pulled. Tens. This is quad tape. That's all right, it's all right. We head on for a thousand after that, move tables, and play a double board bomb pot. Each player puts in 25, then we go straight to two flops. We'll have to win both of them to scoop the pot. The first one is king, queen, nine of two clubs. The second is king, jack, jack. We look down and we see king, seven offsuit, so we've got top pair on both boards. Checks to me under the gun, I bet 125. Player in middle position calls. The small blind rips it in for 440 total. I'm hoping that he just has a jack and we can chop this one up. I reshove, but it's essentially a call because the opponent behind me has less than the amount that the first player jammed for. I do want to try to get him to fold a king if he has one, so saying all in might scare him. It doesn't. He gets all 380 of his chips in. It's probably not good. Main pot, right? We don't know what we're up against, but we're hoping they both have a jack. The first turn card is a 10, so we're hoping no one has a jack now. That seems very unlikely. The second turn is also a 10. Well, he's not gonna win either of these. I got a straight on top, chips in the bottom. Yep, sounds about right. The players do both have a jack, so I was in as good a shape as I could have been in on the flop. I needed to fade a 10 to get half the pot while the other two players would each get a quarter of the pot. Instead, they drill gutters and I lose the whole thing. I add on for another thousand, then I come to the realization that I keep trying to win with the best hand. It turns out that's the incorrect strategy. From this point on, I'm just gonna try to terrorize people by putting them in incredibly difficult situations while I have close to nothing. In this double board bomb pot, we have 10-7 offsuit. On the top board, we have top pair. On the second board, we've got zilch. I bet 125 from the big blind. The cutoff calls were heads up. The turn is a jack. The second turn is a deuce. It's incredibly tough to have a good hand on both boards. I want to put as much pressure on my opponent as possible because I don't want to chop up this pot. I turn my hand into a bluff since my hand has no value on the bottom board. I bet 350. The player cuts out his chips, but then he lets it go. We get that through. I go to the third table where I pick up king ten of spades in the big blind. Under the gun plus one limps in. Under the gun plus two raises to 35. It's gonna cost more than that for me to let go of my suited Broadway cards. I call, the limper folds, it's heads up, the flop comes, queen eight four with two spades, we've got a flush draw with an over and a backdoor straight draw. Lots going on. I check, under the gun plus two, bets 35. I call, the turn is another eight, it's a better card for me than it is for my opponent. I take an interesting line and I lead for 95. Rather than check calling a turn bet or risking it checking through, I prefer to give myself a chance to win right now by betting, and if I don't, then I'll have the opportunity to make a flush on the river. The player snap bolts. That's reasonable to do. We win that one, then pick up ace-queen offsuit in the hijack. Under the gun plus two opens a 25. I three bet to 75. I'm not messing around today. The button cold calls. Under the gun plus two calls. Three of us are going to the flop. It comes king 10 eight with two spades. We've got a gut shot with a backdoor flush draw and one over. Under the gun plus two checks. This is a reasonably good flop for my three bet range. I could have aces, kings, ace king, ace queen of spades. I continue with the story that I'm strong and I bet 150. The button snap folds, I'm happy about that. Under the gun plus two is a little stickier. He calls, the turn is the three of diamonds, it's a complete blank. The player checks. This is a spot in the past in which I sometimes shut down and I don't think that's a good idea in situations like this because it's important to double barrel in certain instances. We still have a draw to the nuts. We've shown strength the whole way. I bet 375. Should get folds from hands like queens, jacks, or a potentially ace queen. If he somehow has a flush draw, he may want to let that go as well since he's out of position and there's only one card to come. The player ends up folding and he shows appreciation for the difficult spot that I put him in. Thank you. We get another bluff through, but we're still stuck at 1,000. We do a double board bomb pot with ace three of diamonds. We're playing 10 handed. So we start with 250 in the middle before we even see a flop. This time we smash both boards. The top one is ace four deuce. We have top pair and a gutter. The bottom board is jack nine seven with two diamonds. We have the nut flush draw. This is a fantastic situation. There are very few hands that we'd be in bad shape against. So we're looking to get in as much money as possible. The big blind leads for 125. He only has 475 total. I raised to 400. Folds back to the big blind. He jams, I'm going nowhere, I call. He shows 10-8 offsuit, so he's drawing virtually dead on the first board, but he has the nuts on the second. 
top turn is a king. So now I'm free rolling because I can't lose that one. We don't waste any time shutting the door on the opponent's hopes of chopping because the second turn is the queen of diamonds. We make the flush. I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah. Finally make a hand that holds. All of a sudden we have over 2,600 in front of us and we're only down 400 on the session. We're not losing tonight. I don't care what it takes. Next we have ace queen suited on the button. Under the gun plus one opens a 20. Under the gun plus two calls, the cutoff calls. I like to flat rather than reopen the pot with a three bet. The four of us are going to the flop. We're in position, it comes 10, seven, four rainbow. Under the gun plus one continues for 40. Under the gun plus two and the cutoff both call. I've got two overs and some backdoor draws to the nuts. I'm gonna peel one. I call as well. The turn is the six of clubs. We pick up a flush draw. Under the gun plus one fires again for 165. I'm not sure what he's gonna have all that often, but he has bet into three other players twice, so it's somewhat scary. Under the gun plus two raises to 445. The cutoff folds. I'm in an interesting position. The pot is pretty big. I've got seven clean outs that'll essentially give me the nuts, potentially nine. And if for some reason, under the gun plus two is making a move, I could be ahead or have additional six pair outs. If I call, I'm a little concerned under the gun plus one will jam, but it's very unlikely that I'll have nine, eight. And I can't imagine what it'll jam with given the circumstances and how the hand is played so far. If I call, he may call and I'll have implied odds from both opponents. If the river's a club, then I'll almost certainly get the remaining thousand dollars from the under the gun plus two player stack. I do call, under the gun plus one, lets his hand go, it's heads up. The river is a black eight, I'm pumped up till I realize it's a spade, we've got nothing. The player jams, not a lot I can do with ace high, I fold. Later the player would tell me that he turned pocket eights into a bluff, then backed his way into a set on the river. Our stack takes a hit, then we play a double board bomb pot, eight handed with queen four offsuit on the button. The first flop is eight, four, three with two spades. The second one is ace, a seven with two spades. Checks to me. I realize that people play these double board bomb pots mostly passively. I want to take advantage. I bet 125. Middle position player is the only caller. We're heads up. The first turn is a queen. We drill two pair. The second turn is the four of spades. So we make a pair on that board too. The player checks. I don't want to risk a fourth spade coming on the second board in case we are ahead there and be forced to chop this. I bet 500. There's plenty of money in this pot. Winning it now would be great. This actually even puts an ace in a tough spot. If he had a hand like ace deuce, he can't be loving it. He could easily be losing on both boards. The player doesn't seem too thrilled. We achieve our goal of getting him to fold to avoid any chance of a chop. In this one, we have ace deuce of hearts in the big blind. Under the gun plus one limps in. The button raises to 25. I call. Under the gun plus one calls, we're going three ways to the flop. It's jack 10 five with one heart. We've got one over with the backdoor flush draw and two separate backdoor straight draws. I check, under the gun plus one checks, the button bets 50. I flat to see what happens on the turn. If I get a card that's good for me, then I may turn my hand into a bluff. That's what it seems like I enjoy doing today anyway. Under the gun plus one folds, the turn is the eight of diamonds. I check, the button bets 100. I actually have a big range advantage in this instance. I'm way more likely to have queen nine or nine seven than the opponent. I don't think this particular player will ever show up with a straight here. I can have all the two pair possibilities and pretty much all the set possibilities other than maybe jacks because sometimes I'll three bet with that pre-flop. I don't float flop bets to give up on turns that are decent cards for me. I also am in a rare mood in which I wanna bluff every opportunity that I get. I put in the raise to 400. He's gonna put him in a very tough position if he has a one pair hand, even if it's an over pair. I'll probably bomb almost all rivers if he calls. Instead he tanks for what seems like forever, then he folds. One more pot is pushed towards us. We're taking no prisoners today. The last table of the night, we have five four spades on the button and a nine handed double board bomb pot. The first flop is queen seven six with two spades. We flop a straight flush draw. The second board is jack eight three with the eight of spades. So one of our straight flush outs is gone. Big blind bets 65, the hijack calls. Calling to potentially chop a hand is a terrible idea in any poker game, whether it's a double board bomb pot or not. We definitely don't wanna do that. We wanna put people in nightmare situations. I raise to 300, the big blind folds quickly, the hijack snap folds, we get the W, and after getting smoked for a few weeks straight, we're certainly forcing plays, but so far they're working out. Here we have pocket tens, under the gun plus two, under the gun plus one limps in, I raise to 25. 
the cutoff calls, the button calls, under the gun plus one calls, we're going four ways to the flop, comes seven, six, five with two spades, under the gun plus one checks. This is a scary board when facing three other players who have all called my pre-flop raise. I'm not sure I love checking or betting, but ultimately I check. So do the players behind me. The turn is a six. Under the gun plus one checks. This is a great card because it makes it less likely someone flopped a set. Given the fact that no one bet behind me on the flop and under the gun plus one is checked twice, I'm confident that I've got the best hand. I bet 55. The cutoff calls, the button, and under the gun plus one players fold. We're heads up. The river is the deuce of spades. The flush draw gets there. I don't think the cutoff would have checked back a flush draw on the flop, so this isn't a particularly scary card. I'm still going to have the best hand the majority of the time. I need to bet for value. I asked myself how much the opponent might call with a hand containing a 7, and I settle on 75. The player calls. I'm not sure what he had, but with this win, we're currently only stuck $50. Next, I get a fun proposition from Andrew. I said $5 overlay to you if you win this hand. As if I needed more incentive to bluff off piles of chips. I make it 30 with 6-5 offsuit under the gun plus 1. Not your standard open. Under the gun plus 2, 3 bets to 110. The button calls. I get an extra $5 if I call and win, so I'm not giving up that opportunity. I call for 80 more out of position with a real piece of shit hand. The flop comes king 10 7 with two clubs. It doesn't look like I've got a very good chance of getting some Andrew dollars. I check. The under the gun plus two player and the button both check. The turn is a five. We make a pair. That's right, we've got a chance. I check. Under the gun plus two bets 125. The button folds. Time to really go after this $5 overlay. I raised to 400. I thought I was gonna win some Bradley dollars. I'm glad to hear that. Sounds like he's gonna fold. Nope. He calls, we're heads up. I love to drill something here. The river is an eight. I don't hit anything too helpful, but the card is still better for me than it is for the opponent's three betting range. I really want that $5, so I make it 900. Before I get all the chips in, the player snap folds. His name's Cameron. He's one of my favorite guys to see out there in Texas. He posted this pick. I was actually willing to risk my biscuit for half the amount that he thought. I can't even imagine what I would have done if there was an extra $10 up for grabs. I probably would have just open ripped it preflop. I'm a certified wild man, but at least I'm not a stuck wild man. I'm out of the hole. We're playing like a maniac, but everything has worked out when we haven't had it. We're up over 500 at this point. In our last double board bomb pot, I pick up queen nine offsuit in the big blind. The first board is 10 nine deuce with two hearts, and the second board is king jack nine with two hearts. It's a fairly good flop for us. We've got middle pair on one board, and then a pair with a gutter on the other board. I bet 125. The cutoff is the only caller. We're heads up. The turns are the ace of diamonds and the five of clubs. Not great for us necessarily. It doesn't stop me though. The whole point of betting in these instances is to not chop, and that means I have to bet big. I put in four black chips, and I get called pretty quickly. This pot has gotten big. The first river is an offsuit four. The second is a seven. The action's on me. I can give up or I can fire away. I don't feel much like giving up. I feel like applying maximum pressure. I can't emphasize enough how difficult it is to have a strong hand on both boards, so betting big is extremely effective. If the player were really strong, then I imagine he would have raised me at some point on either the flop or the turn. After thinking it over, I announce a bet of a thousand. I slide my chips in and he folds right away. We win another huge pot with a large bet. We're in for 3,000 total, but we have over 4,000 in front of us after playing like a lunatic. And we book a nice win before racking up. It's not too easy to do a post-game speech when you've had nine IPAs. I don't recommend anyone do that. Anyway, this didn't turn out too well. I have to properly wrap things up once we get to the hotel. Finished the 5-5 five five here. Won about 1080. Pretty drunk. Lost 2K yesterday. On a pretty big downswing overall. I feel like today isn't really to pit how things have been going lately. But uh, things worked out. That's it, that's it, we're done. 
That's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. I wanna give a huge thanks to everybody who showed up at the Texas Card House. That was a crazy session. I don't think I bluffed that much in my entire life. And I, I hope it made for an exciting video for you guys to watch. I just think that these double board bomb pots open up a ton of opportunity to uh, try to make plays because it's very rare that someone's gonna be strong on both boards. I mentioned in the beginning that I was gonna talk about online poker and uh, my partnership with PKC. I'm really excited about that. Uh, there are plenty of advantages. I, I think it's the best site, the best option for US players to play online. And I, I wanna talk about that. I haven't played too much online poker and I'd heard nothing about PKC before they approached me. So for that reason, I was skeptical about the site and I almost just turned them down basically immediately. But I looked into it. It turns out Nick Petrangelo is on the game security panel. He's one of the most reputable guys in poker. He has like 17 million in tournament earnings, which is nuts. He's a superstar in the game. So for him to be involved says a lot, made me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, <clears throat> I, I then tried to talk to everybody I could about the site. I talked to uh, pretty, pretty well-known people in the poker industry and they told me that everything they'd heard about it was good. I talked to random people at the poker tables and uh, everybody pretty much said great things about it. So I felt good at that point. I, I fired it up. I've got some money on there. I've been playing, really only played a few hundred hands but I definitely wanna play a lot more. The games tend to be super, super soft, which is awesome. Uh, it mainly caters to Asian, Asian people, so you do have to play in Chinese currency. You play in the yuan, it's like a 6.75 to one uh, ratio with the US dollar. I mainly play one, two, four right now. There is a mandatory straddle. You play eight-handed in most of these games, and that ends up being like a, I think like a 60 cent big blind. Um, but I have a link down below in the description box if you guys want to play with me on there. My name's Cosmonaut. I also have links to uh, uh, lots of other information regarding online poker and the site itself. Definitely check those out. You want to make sure that you do your research and that you feel comfortable before you sign up. Um, the reason that I like this site though is over other sites is because I mean, there really aren't like a ton of other good options for US players. There's ACR and the CEO has just said some things that I thought were really stupid, made it seem like he doesn't really care about his players that much, doesn't really care about his game integrity. And then also there's WSOP online since I live in Nevada. And I think that's a great site. The only issue that I have with it is that uh, it's not a huge player pool. So the lineups tend to be really tough and the games aren't that big. So it makes more sense for me to just go play live. I can go to Bellagio, play in a bigger game against a softer lineup and make more money. Um, but back to PKC, there are a lot of pretty cool features about it. You can check your opponent's stats, which is awesome. You can uh, reveal cards if you wanna know what uh, your opponent uh, had in, in hand with you and you can rabbit hunt. You can also buy insurance. I wouldn't suggest doing that. That's gotta be a negative EV play. Uh, you do have to deposit and cash out in Bitcoin. If you don't have a Bitcoin account, I have a link down below in the description box with information on how to set one up. Uh, let's see, cash outs happen. Usually, they usually take about an hour or an hour and a half. I haven't cashed out myself, but I know Matt Vaughn has, and that's he said that he cashed out and it took less than an hour for one transaction at least. Anyway, hope you guys are all doing well. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you next time.